Hi there. Now for this question, we're given that the function f is defined by f, which is such that x maps on to x squared plus 1 for x greater than or equal to 0. And in the first part, we've got to define in a similar way the inverse function of f for three marks. And then go on in part 2 to solve the equation ff of x equals 185 divided by 16 for three marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll give you the numerical solution. And if you want to, you can then carry on and see my work solution. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Well, the numerical answers to part 1 and 2. For part 1, we've got the inverse function of f is such that x maps onto the root of x minus 1. And the domain is x is greater than or equal to 1. And for the second part, the answer for x is that it's 3 over 2 or 1 and a half. Now, if you'd like to see the work solutions, I'll just run through those now with you. So for part one, what I like to do when I get anything like this is re-express it in this form. f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Now when it comes to working out the inverse function, what we do is we let x replace the f of x. So we'll just put that in. Let x replace the f of x. And then wherever we see any x's over here, we write y's in their place. So we've got x equals y squared plus 1. And what we now do is we make y the subject. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. So therefore, y squared would be equal to x minus 1. And then we take the root to both sides. So that's going to give me, therefore, y equals the square root then of x minus 1. But when we square root something, it generally then is plus or minus. The question is, which one of these two are we going to take? Is it going to be plus root of x minus 1 or minus the root of x minus 1? Or is it even going to be both of them? Well, to answer this question, let's turn to the graph okay, of f of x. And this is what I'd always encourage you to do in questions like this. We should be familiar with the fact that if you've got any function of x and you take its inverse, it's always a mirror image in the line y equals x. Now, if we were to look at f of x equaling x squared plus 1, this would be a parabola, u-shaped parabola, something like this, going through the y-axis at this point here, where say x was, well, x is 0, but y is 1. So we'd have a parabola like that normally, but the domain is x is greater than or equal to 0. So it's going to be just the right-hand half of the parabola. So it's going to look, say, something like that. This would be f of x equaling x squared plus 1. So when it comes to the inverse of f of x, it's going to be a mirror image of this curve then in the line y equals x. And what we're going to get is something looking like this. And this point here will be where x equals 1, y equals 0. So can you see that all the y values on this part of the curve are positive? So it cannot be the negative version for this. It's got to be the positive one. So what we've got here is f minus 1 of x is equal to the root then of x minus 1. Now we're not to give this in this format. We're to give it in a format similar to this. So if we finish off then by saying that the inverse function of f okay, is such that x maps onto, and then it will be the root of x minus 1. And as for the domain, the domain is any value of x greater than or equal to 1. So x is greater than or equal to 1. 
Now for the next part of this question, part two, let's just border that off. We've got to look at solving the equation then, f f of x equals 185 over 16. So this is on combining functions. So what we've got here on the left is f, first of all, of f of x. And f of x we've seen is x squared plus 1. So we've just got f of x squared plus 1. And this equals the 185 over 16. And when we've got this, we replace any x in f of x with x squared plus 1. So what we're going to have is x squared plus 1, replacing this x here, but then it's going to be all squared. And then we have 1. So therefore, what we have is x squared plus 1, all squared, then plus the 1, and that equals the 185 over 16. Now rather than expand this bracket out, what I've got to do is actually subtract 1 from both sides. If I do that, we've got x squared plus 1, all squared, equals 185 over 16, minus 1. Minus 16 sixteenths, if you like, there. So if I do that sum, then we get x squared plus 1, all squared, equals 169 over 16. And this is very easy to square root. If I square root both sides, it's just going to leave me with x squared plus 1 on the left hand side. And square rooting a fraction is the same as square rooting the top and the bottom. Square root of 169 is 13, and the square root of 16 is 4. And we mustn't forget that it could be plus or minus as well. So to get x squared, I'm just going to subtract 1 from both sides. So x squared would equal minus 1 plus or minus 13 over 4. But the problem is, x squared must be a positive value. If you square anything, it's going to be positive. So I'll just put here, but x squared must be greater than or equal to 0. And if that's the case, I can't have minus 1 minus 13 over 4. It's got to be minus 1 plus 13 over 4, which gives me 9 quarters. So therefore, x squared must be equal to 9 quarters. And again, if I square root both sides, then it follows from this that x would be equal to plus or minus 3 over 2. But x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So therefore, x must be equal to 3 over 2. Okay?